In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we will consider how the Confidior helps us to prepare for the coming of the Lord. First, we may ask, why do we uh, confess to the saints? Why do we not simply ask the saints for their aid? Why do we actually confess to them in our Confidior? Sin, first, is an offense against God. But shouldn't that be enough? Well, strictly speaking, it is to confess our sins to God. In the sacrament of penance, the sinner confesses only to God, for only God can forgive sins. But penance is a private act, and the Mass is a public act of worship, an act that is fundamentally social. As much as we use the phrase, there is no such thing in reality as a private Mass. Mass is always offered for the whole Church, in union with the angels and the saints in heaven, all the faithful on earth. And thus, even when there is only one server in attendance, the priest always speaks to the people in the plural. Remember also that the greatest commandment is twofold, love of God first and neighbor second. But these are so linked that St. John tells us, If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he seeth, how can he love God, whom he seeth not? Which means it is not sufficient to love God without any care for our neighbor. Yes, God, only God, can forgive sin. But the same God tells us to settle accounts with our neighbor before we get to the judge, that one ought to be reconciled with his neighbor if he has wronged him, before offering his gift at the altar. Is it any wonder, then, that we prepare to ascend to the altar by confessing not simply to God, but to the saints and to our neighbors? Sin, even the most secret sin, damages our holy society, the church militant. When one part suffers, the whole body suffers. When one member fails, The others have to carry the load, or they are pulled down with the sinner. We can see this very clearly in the family, the first society. If in a family, one member becomes prideful and angry, he tempts the others to respond in kind, and soon the whole family is fighting. But when the other members counter that pride and anger by increasing their own humility and meekness, the damage to the whole is lessened, and even the sinner may be won back, made healthy again. The point is that even the actions of one person can have a great effect on this little society, this little microcosm of the great society. It's true then for all of our society. So you might say, well, why then do we confess to the saints? Why not just to confess to God and then to our brothers? It makes sense, you say, to confess to our neighbors, to ask their forgiveness, to seek to repair the damage we have done them. But how have we damaged the saints? Remember that sin is an offense to our good God. God, of course, cannot be harmed. So how does our sinning offend God if it cannot harm him in the slightest? Sin is a transgression, a violation of the right order set out for us to follow by God. Why? Because this order is good for us, and transgressing it hurts not God, but we ourselves, whom God loves very much. The saints, holy and pure in heaven, are more united to God now than they ever were on earth. They love what God loves, and thus must be offended by what offends him. That is, they love what he loves, which is us, and wish to see us happy with them in heaven. This applies not just to the saints, but the angels too, who rejoice at the conversion of the sinner. When we pray the Confidior at the start of Mass, or before Holy Communion, we strengthen the bond of union in between us and God by loving what he loves and hating what he hates, and between us and the saints as well, 
recognizing how sin damages both of these bonds, and thus really only damages ourselves. So in our Confidior, after God, we next confess to our Blessed Mother Mary, for there is no one besides God who loves us more than our Blessed Mother. She suffered next to Christ for us. She is our co-redemptrix because of it, because of her love for us. No matter how sinful a child is, no matter how hated by all, he is still loved by his mother. So powerful is a mother's love. Just so with us and Mary. And so we ought to remember Mary too. If we are tempted to fall into sin, remember to call out to her aid and mercy, but also to apologize should we have failed to do so. As related by St. Alphonsus, there was a certain youth once who visited an image of Sorrowful Mary every day, in which she was shown with seven swords piercing her heart. One night, the unhappy youth fell into mortal sin. Going next morning to visit the image, he saw in the heart of the Blessed Virgin not only seven, but eight swords. As he stood gazing at this, he heard a voice saying to him, that this sin had added the eighth sword to the heart of Mary. This softened his hard heart. He went immediately to confession, and through the intercession of his advocate, recovered the divine grace. Not stopping here, we turn next to the angels, who rejoice in our conversion, and make our confession to their leader, the chief of the angels, St. Michael, who is also appointed to watch over our souls at the hour of our death. Remember the battle with Satan fought by St. Michael. We, soldiers in Christ's army, weaken that army by sin and commit defection to the enemy by mortal sin. It is thus entirely fitting to confess next to St. Michael, our general in battle who is like in purity to Our Lady, to the holy angels, then St. John the Baptist, purified while in the womb, praised extraordinarily by our Lord, and given a mission to prepare his way by the preaching of penance. As we prepare, prepare the way of the Lord, as we prepare our souls for his coming at Mass, it is very fitting to confess to this great preacher for those times we have ignored his best efforts. He came to make the ways straight and smooth, and by our sins, we have made those paths rocky and difficult. Finally, we confess to the founders of our church, first to St. Peter, singular apostle of unity, head of the apostles, rock upon which Christ founded the whole church. He represents not only our Roman church, but the whole universal church just as the head represents the body. Paul, too, who gave his life to bring the faith to the Gentiles, to give us the life of Christ, we confess to him for any time we have let that blood on all those efforts be shed in vain. We prepare for Christ's coming in Advent, as we do in the Mass, with repentance first, to clear the way of obstacles, to recognize that our sins do wound our neighbors and wound ourselves the most by weakening our bonds with each other, with the angels and the saints, and most especially weakening our very love for our good God, who loves us beyond human comprehension. And let us appeal deeply, as we do in the second half of the Confidior, to each other, to these angels and saints, to our own personal special patrons, but most of all of these, to our Blessed Mother for intercession on our behalf. And so we close with the prayer by St. Alphonsus the Goring. O my soul, behold the beautiful hope of salvation and of life eternal, which the Lord has granted thee by giving thee in his mercy confidence in the protection of his mother, when thou hast by thy sins so often merited his displeasure and the pains of hell. 
Give thanks then to God and to thy protectress Mary, who hath deigned to shelter thee beneath her mantle, as already thou knowest, by the many graces that thou hast received through her. Yes, I thank thee, O my loving mother, for the good thou hast done me, a miserable sinner deserving of hell. From how many dangers hast thou delivered me, O my queen? How much light and how many mercies hast thou obtained for me from God by thy intercession? What great advantage, O what great honor hast thou received from me, that thou art thus intent on doing me good? Thy goodness alone, then, hath moved me, hath moved thee in my behalf. Ah, if I were to give my blood, my life for thee, it would be little compared to what I owe thee. For thou hast delivered me from eternal death. Thou, who hast enabled me to recover, as I hope, the divine favor, and from thee, I finally I acknowledge all my blessings to proceed. O oh, my lady, most worthy of love, I, a miserable creature, can make thee no return but always to praise and love thee. Ah, do not disdain to accept the affection of a poor sinner who is enamored of thy goodness. If my heart is not worthy to love thee because it is evil, and full of earthly affections, do thou change it. Ah, unite me to my God, and unite me, so that I can never be separated from his love. This thou desirest of me, that I may love my, thy God, and this I wish from thee. Obtain for me that I may love him, and love him always, and I ask nothing more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.